Welcome to another episode of Conversations. Today we have Anita. Hi, Anita. Thank you so much for being on the show. Hi, Dawn. I'm super happy to be here. Yes. Well, so I told Anita before I hit record that I've been spying on her and I noticed that she was doing some shorts and reels and all the, whatever all the words are, um, about grief. And so then I asked her if she had lost somebody and actually you're in the throes of losing a relationship. And that is so hard. I will never forget. I went to a high school reunion. I don't know if it was my tenure and somebody said, where's your husband? And I said, Oh, I'm getting a divorce. And somebody, some girl chimed in the background. Congratulations. <laughs> it did ease the, the awkward, you know, and cause everybody's at a different point in their lives, whether you're just at the beginning of it, you know, and you're really grieving or you've been out of it for 10 years and you've got the hindsight to say, you, you'll be fine. Don't worry. You know, no regrets, all that. It's hard though, when you're in the middle of it, what happened? Was it a strain with being home with COVID and all of that? Or has it been going on for a short amount of time? You know, it's it's funny. And I mean, it is a very raw thing for me still. And when people ask me what happened, it's honestly, it's not any one thing. It's just that the energy has changed. And my ex, he's he's a lovely man. He's a lovely man. He, you know was kind and compassionate and there were some energetic things that just didn't work for me anymore mm -hmm. i've spent we've been together 20 years my daughter last year went off to university so you know and i've been feeling this for a few years that that just the level of intimacy that i want in this kind of relationship just isn't there. And I think part of it is, you know, men and women, I actually hadn't realized this. I just read this book that really solidified some of the differences between the way men and women are socialized. Mm -hmm. Women are socialized. We are taught from early, early on that we need to do lots of work to be okay in the world. So in general, and of course, these are generalizations, sure. women tend to look inward, tend to be more willing to do the personal work. Whereas men are never marketed to in this way. And so the idea of starting to look inward and improve not because you're broken not because something's so awful but just because things could be better things there is you know capacity for emotional growth and you know women do this naturally often and men just don't and so for a long time I was talking you know this isn't working I need these different things I have this vision mm -hmm. and nothing was changing. And so I realized I got to a point where I was like, well, I can continue in this comfortable life and it would be fine, but I'm not here for fine. Yeah. That's not what I came here for. And, you know, through COVID, I really felt a little bit like a sleeper cell personally, like COVID hit. And I was like, oh my God, this is what I'm here for. Mm -hmm. This is the moment I'm, you know, waking up, stepping so fully into what I know my life purpose is to support new earth leaders to bring in a new way of being. Mm -hmm. So that was a lot. <laughs> No, it's interesting though. Um, cause I wondered about that. I, um, am in a happy marriage, but this is my second marriage. And, you know, I wondered about that when everything did shut down, how it was for people that 
we're kind of just going through the motions and maybe not in a happy relationship, not content with the way things were, but they're just like, it's fine. And then going to work and just, you know, we all do it, go into automatic pilot and then having everything shut down and everybody kind of being forced to deal with the reality of, I don't really like being home. I don't like how our relationship is. I don't like how we communicate or don't communicate. Yeah. I thought a lot about that because, um, it just brought a lot of hindsight. I think for people, not just that their jobs, a lot of people looked back and were like, what am I doing? Why am I doing this job? You know, now I can do it from home, but do I even want to be doing it? Like, it's just, it was so interesting. I wanted to ask you, this is kind of off topic, but what would you say is the definition or whatever of a, an empath? What is an empath to you? So for me, being an empath, this is a really deep um, awareness of other people's emotions. And like initially, when I first started to realize this, like I'd be driving by myself in the car and all of a sudden I would be crying. I'm like, what is happening here? Right. And, you know, initially I was like, well, maybe I'm just crazy. <laughs> like something weird is happening. Right. <laughs> and, you know, I, I did a lot of processing. I started to talk to people and the word empath had started to become a little bit more mainstream. So I would say that would be like eight to 10 years ago, eight, nine years ago, when I first started to, to really think about this. And I started to notice there would be moments at the grocery store or, you know, just doing various things where all of a sudden I was overcome with emotion that wasn't mine. Mm. That, and, you know, lots of times we have emotions in our subconscious that we're not aware of. But I've always been doing my work and, you know, I'm definitely not perfect by any means. And I just knew that this, these energies were not mine. So I would feel other people's emotions and be swept away in that. And so going out to crowds, like going to big events, it's, those are things where I have to be really aware, really grounded and sometimes I wear a crystal, sometimes I just do some energetic protection, and often at the end, I need to just clear out, sit by myself, re, um, like just integrate and check in and release anything that I've picked up that isn't mine. Right. So how do you do that for, because you help people, correct? I mean, that's like yeah. your job. So how yeah. do you not take on other people's garbage and absorb yeah. it? Like, how do you get rid of it? Do you have to do something every night to kind of release it all? I do. And I think, you know, I think there are some of us that are here, light workers, new earth leaders, star seeds, empath senses, whatever term you want to use. I feel like there's a thread that ties all those together. Some of us are here to help clear some of the denser energies. I consider myself one of those people. And so I haven't mastered, like, we haven't mastered not picking up anything. And mm -hmm. that to me would also, what happens then, you put this, sh you know, hard armor around your shell. Maybe you don't pick anything up, but you also don't absorb the good things then. Right. And so that's, you know, initially I had more of a shell around my heart. I had more armor and that's been a process of releasing that, becoming more vulnerable and really stepping into that more open-hearted space and this ownership of this is what I'm here for. Mm -hmm. So do you feel like you have grown and changed so much and that your ex soon to be ex stayed the same? Yeah. I mean, he's grown too, but 
you know, he said to me at one point, like, I always feel like I'm catching up to you. And then you run up ahead again. Right. And I think that's certainly that was not my intention, but that's part of my whole life. I've had a, like this internal drive. I'm going somewhere. I can't even stop this train, even if I tried. I don't know where exactly the end is, but I, I'm going, it's happening. And so, you know, I think that was just part of it. And, and you know, there were some intrinsic differences in our view of life mm -hmm. that, you know, me raising the light and him not believing that there is light, right? That's a big difference. Right. You know? Yes. And so because this is my business, this is so much of my life. Spirituality is so important to me. It just got to a point where I was like, mm -hmm, yeah, it's just, I don't want to have to fight this energy in my home. This is my sacred space. Right. It needs to be sacred. And for me to do the work I'm doing in the world, it's not easy work. And, you know, in a lot of cases, it's leading edge, which means, you know, the whole mass is not quite in agreement yet. So it can feel quite lonely and quite challenging. And, and I don't want to have to, you know, battle that in my home. No, no. Or like you said, you only get this one life. You want to be able to fully embrace it and enjoy it. And you're trying to help other people get to that place too. Yeah. I think it's always been where grief is just death. People always grief is death. And it, it really, it can be the death of a relationship, a loss of a job, loss of a pet. You know, it's, it's not mm -hmm. always, um, someone, uh, dying, it, it can be just those feelings, those emotions that go with losing something that's been part of your life for a long time. Yeah. And, and I think for me, you know, becoming an empty nester, there's grief there. The, you know, what, something we talked about before we started recording COVID, the grief of what was, the grief of the freedoms and, you know, sort of the way the world was before and the way the world is now, it's different. And there is grief there as well. So there's so many different layers and things that, you know, each of us will um, respond to, will have a different level of grief to these things, but they're all things that can bring up grief. And when we have any emotion, we need to process this emotion. Yeah. I think that's part of the problem is that people have a hard time sitting with the bad things that come. And so it's distraction. Like, let's see what's on Netflix. Yeah. Let's let me scroll and get on TikTok. Or, I mean, I'm guilty of it. I'm not judging. Um, but yeah, I think we're all trying to do whatever we can to divert our attention away from sitting with it. Cause it doesn't feel good. It doesn't oh, feel good course. to grieve. It doesn't feel good to be sad or have trauma, you know, and have bad yeah. feelings. So to sit with it doesn't sound like something very fun or comfy <laughs> to do. And, and the thing is there's, there's two pieces to that, that I think are really important when you have trauma in your nervous system unresolved trauma, sitting still is really hard because it doesn't feel safe. So, you know, you have to have a certain level of safety to be still. Right. And so that's really important. And then what you said something else there that I wanted to speak on, but I just diverting like we just divert oh, the, the distraction mm -hmm. right all the distraction and most of us grew up in households where our parents our family of origin were not able to hold in some cases any emotion but in the majority of cases there certainly wasn't space for anger for frustration for sadness 
for anything other than you're fine. It's okay. It's going to be all right. And, you know, that's just the way we were brought up. That's the way our parents, you know, went through things and there just wasn't that capacity. And now we are at a time on the planet where there is space for this. And each of us has to take our baby steps into this discomfort because just like that little kid bear book, there's only one way to the other side and it's through the center. Right. So what's changing? What's changing with everything to make space for all of this? Yeah. I mean, I wish I wish I could say this in a in a concrete way, but I mean, the energy on the planet has changed dramatically. The, you know, in terms of science, the solar flares that are hitting the earth now. We didn't have anything like this 10 years ago. The I mean, technology for better or for worse has changed things mm-hmm. dramatically. The you know, the planet the way I feel like the planet has had enough of the bullshit. The, I believe that Gaia is a being. This is, she has been holding us. We are all guests here and we have abused this privilege. And that's part of why now we're seeing more outrageous weather. Like these sorts of things are happening now because she's done and we're moving that you know the earth is moving from 3d to 5d which i know is a like a a radical concept and you know not everybody can understand it or agree with it but that's okay yeah yeah and i think a lot of that has to do with the labels that are out there that may or may not be accurate like when you say um star seeds. Like yeah. people are like, what the heck? What is that? I don't yeah. even know what that, you know, what is a star seed or um, a light worker? You know, those things sound like something from Star Trek or Star Wars. You know, it sounds so off that people that are more of scientific and facts and all that, they're like, what, <laughs> what is this? Yeah. I, I am pretty open I, I really am. I just, I want everybody to be happy. I want the world to be doing okay. You know, um, I feel like I am an empath, but when people talk about star seeds and all that, I don't really understand it, but it's not me saying there's no such thing. It's just, I don't understand it in, in my world. Um, so what can people do to make the process easier or to help the process? What, what can people do that are open-minded and wanting to help, but they don't know their place in this picture. Yeah. So can I just rewind for a moment? You bet. I know I get going. (laughs) In terms of some of those, those um, uh, labels, I want to just talk briefly on the, the light worker label, because for me personally, I have shied away from that label up until about six months ago. I wanted nothing to do with it because I felt like there was a lot of airy fairy baloney around that term. And I saw a lot of people doing things that they were terming light work. And I was looking at them thinking that is not anything light. I can, you know, feel that in my body, not all of them, of course, but just, there was a lot of distortion on that. And so over the past six months, I've started to really own this word because I've realized it's so clear now, like we are, we are at a point where there is a war going on between the light and the dark. And, um, I am here increasing the light. I am here spreading the light. And so I've started to use that term. And I just wanted to share that because it, it, I think it's important, you know, and, and with a lot of the, a lot of the labels, a lot of the more sort of out there things, we have such mass distortion on this planet and 
moving forward, really knowing ourselves, like really knowing ourselves, both the good and the less nice, you know, the ugly parts of myself, the jealousy, the whatever it is, mm -hmm. you know, these moments where I'm bitchy or, you know, not whatever, knowing that and loving myself regardless, then I can go out and bring vulnerability and compassion and connection to my community. But only through knowing myself so well can I do that. And this is, you know, what I see as the big trauma in the world. Like we don't know ourselves. And, you know, I'm going to say something quite radical and, you know, I know you're in the U S right. Correct. Yeah. So, and I mean, it's, it's radical here too, but I did not get the COVID vaccine. I did not get the vaccine because trauma, my definition of trauma, the definition is too much, too fast, too soon for the nervous system. Everything about the vaccine felt like that to me. And it's not because I'm some right wing person. That's not it. It just didn't feel right. And I was careful. You know, mm -hmm. I no problem wearing a mask. I wanted to be respectful, but respectful, but not at the expense of myself. Mm -hmm. And it felt super, super wrong to me. And I lost friends over this. Like it was you know, I think many people did. And so, you know, just this knowing ourselves and using our discernment, that's where I wanted to go here, the discernment, right? And this is when you know yourself, you can find your discernment. And whether it's through your third eye, your intuitive knowing, or through your heart, or the combination of these two. But if we stick with the mind, the mind is not going to discern for us because there are so many ways to spin everything, right? There is uh, lots of science pro-vaccine. There were doctors and scientists against the vaccine, mm -hmm. lots of them. And so, you know, we each have to find this way to our discernment and make decisions moving forward that are the best decisions for us. Right. So what do you say to someone that like, cause I'm at a point in my life, I'm, I'm older, my kids are grown and gone and having their own kids and you know, I work, um, but it's not a crazy frazzled time for me. Like it was when I was in my twenties, raising my kids in my thirties and basketball and school functions and all that. So what, how is a, a, a good way for someone that is just up to their eyeballs in it, or maybe they have a job that keeps them, how do yeah. they sit there and say, how do I have time to, you know, figure out who I am right now, <laughs> who yeah. I really am? Like, what is a, what is a good place for somebody like that to start? I think you know, there are a lot of different tools and certainly one of the biggest, easiest ones is meditation. And whether that's a guided meditation or, you know, my, my sister-in-law, when her, she has three kids when they were younger and she was like, how do I squeeze in a meditation? So you're doing the dishes, you're folding the laundry, you're organizing the drawers, but you're doing it with intention you are present. You are there in your body. You're feeling the clothes. You're feeling the water. Anytime you do anything with intention, this is increasing your capacity to be your capacity to be present, which then expands your capacity to handle whatever is coming at you in life. But we're not present a lot. Most of no. us are operating, you know, you're doing the dishes, you're listening to a podcast, you're like thinking about, you know, what's for breakfast. Yep. And, and you can't do this all the time, be present, right? But if you set the timer for two minutes while you're doing the dishes and 
focus for those two minutes or, you know, look out the window, see the birds, connect with that in that moment. Like these are little things that start you on this path. Okay. So baby steps, just yeah. keep working on. I've been trying to not have my radio on or music on when I drive. I don't drive far, but I'm just like, that could be my time of either quiet or I, uh, I am religious as far. I believe in God, you know, or the universe, whatever you want to call it, you know, it's, but, um, so a lot of the times that'll be, you know, thank you for letting me get to my destination safe, or please let me, you know, just things like that. I've tried to be more mindful of doing those kinds of things instead of just having the music on and letting my mind wander and then pulling into the spot and thinking, how did I get here? <laughs> yeah. 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 I, I, I think this is so valuable, Dawn, because gratitude also is just so powerful and, you know, can take like a minute, right. Or five minutes again, like each of us has that amount of time. Right. And, you know, just like, don't watch that second show or, you know, put the phone down just for five minutes and, right. and you know, like thinking of gratitude and, you know, tapping. I know you had a session, like that's a tool I use daily, every single day. And I use it without words, just tapping through the points as part of my meditation. Okay. Yeah. I had another yeah. podcast that I did and, and the lady was like saying how before her feet even hit the ground in the morning from her bed, she will thank whoever yeah. <laughs> for, uh, for five things, five things that she's grateful for. She said, that's the way that she starts her day. And that's seems pretty simple too. You know, just, yeah. you, I'm grateful that I have a bed to sleep in. I'm grateful that I have the means to get out of bed you know, not, you know, have my health or it's, it's easier than people think to find three to five things to really be grateful for. It doesn't have to be some big, huge moment. Yeah. And I mean, if you're at a place in life where three to five feels huge, start with one. Right. <laughs> right. I think the whole and thing with meditation though, is people think that they have to be crisscross applesauce Um, you know, like no kids, they're on an Island. So I think that that's, and it can be overwhelming too. I've got monkey mind and I usually do have to do a guided type of, you know, uh, meditation. Cause I, my mind just, yeah. it won't stop. Of course. I, I actually have, um, a whole host of meditations on insight timer and one of them is um, a standing meditation. It's very short. I think like under five minutes, it's grounding, but it's designed for people who can't do still, right? Who, who think the traditional meditation, because for years I couldn't do that. That just was like crazy talk. You mm -hmm. think I'm going to be still and nobody's got, I'm just going to sit here in this side. no. Right, right. Right, like that wasn't an option. And um, so, you know, starting where you are, and this is, uh, of course, you know, I've been around the block a few times myself. And, you know, every time I try and start from zero and go to 50, whatever it is, that's an automatic recipe for failure. <laughs> I go from zero to five, well, now I'm looking like a rock star. And that's how we build and grow when we're like shame does not help when we're shaming ourselves and beating ourselves up for not being good enough. Nothing is going to become right. solid there. We need to love ourselves up and be our own cheerleader. Yeah. I love that message. So, um, how can people find you if they want to, um, look up, look you up, find your meditations, all that good stuff. How can they find you? So my website is the best place, anitakaiserwellness.com. And so you can find out all about the work I do. And at the bottom of the front page on my website, I have all my socials, including the link to Insight Timer, which then shows you all my meditations. Awesome. Well, I know we were kind of all over the place, but I felt like that's what it needed to be because 
you, you cover a lot, but just the fact that you're going through something right now that I have been through, there is light at the end of the tunnel. It's, there are good days and bad, just like there are when you're not married or not going through a divorce, you know? So just try and be nice to yourself and it'll, it'll be better. It'll get better. I promise. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. This was a, a, a delightful conversation for me. And, um, I think, it followed the path of water, the flow round and about. And that was exactly what needed to happen. Perfect. Well, good luck to you. I will be in touch for sure, but I appreciate your time and coming on the show. Um, cause I think it's going to help a lot of people. I love the, the term start where you are. I really like that. Did you, did you pick a word for 2024? I sure did. It's freedom. Oh, wonderful. Just a small little word. <laughs> I mine was faith and and more just letting letting God take take the reins and me trying to step back a little bit, not trying to control things all the time. I think that's just maddening. So um I, well, good I luck in your share? your quest for freedom. <laughs> Beautiful. Yeah. Thank you, Don. All right. Well, we'll talk soon, Anita. Thank you so much. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.